What's up everybody, it's Charles. Today we're talking about not skipping the basic stuff when diagnosing issues with the car. This comes about from something that I did, or I guess didn't do, when I was working on the R32. You may remember way back when I first got the car that one of the problems was the heated seats didn't work. The driver's side heated seat does not work, so we're gonna be doing diagnosis on that to figure out what the deal is. And that was on the list of videos to make, walking you guys through how to properly diagnose the heated seats not working. Because it was coming into spring and summer, I wasn't super concerned about it, but when it started to get cold, it was time to get the seat warmers working again. So what did I do? I grabbed my multimeter, I grabbed my power probe, I get the wiring diagram, get the scan tool, which really probably wouldn't have helped anyway, and of course, all the camera gear to do a really thorough video for you guys. Before going all in and shooting the video for you guys, I thought, you know what, let me just do a quick check of the fuse and make sure it's not something really dumb like a blown fuse. Of course it wouldn't be a blown fuse. I would have fixed that months ago, right? And to be fair, I never did anything to try and diagnose this issue. It was just a problem for a video at some point. So I open the little fuse door and I look at the fuse panel and I'm like, hmm, one of these fuses looks a little different than the rest of them. A 15 amp fuse is typically a darkish blue. This one that's installed is a teal color. So I look at the fuse card, which is still installed in the car, and go, huh, what do you know? That fuse is for the heated seat. So I grab the fuse puller, pull the fuse out, and wouldn't you know, the fuse was blown. So what did I do? I took a new fuse, popped it in that location, flipped the heated seats on, and wouldn't you know, both heated seats worked. Wonderful, the problem was fixed. Unfortunately, you don't get a video on how to diagnose heated seats not working. This is something that I have seen so, so, so many times. I've gotten caught up in this where we're in this diagnosis mode, right? And we, we have this idea where we're gonna get the scan tool out, we're going to do volt drop tests, which I'm a fan of, right? Uh, we're gonna do all this crazy stuff, get breakout boxes and start doing wire pinning tests. We're so far ahead in this diagnostic process for the problem that we have to remember to do the golden rule for diagnosing and working on cars, and that's keep it simple stupid. Well, I guess we can't say keep it simple stupid anymore. Apparently that's offensive. So we're gonna say keep it super simple. Just kidding, I'm still gonna say keep it simple stupid. Now, even though I didn't get burned by just a blown fuse on this one, I already had decided what was wrong with the car, right? The seats had had work done at some point, so I'm picturing the seat warmer, component is not plugged in or it's broken or it's not there at all. So I'm ready to get like new seat warmer pads and I'm already budgeting for it before I even did one thing, before I even walked out to the car. Now you may be thinking, Charles, you looked at a fuse, you've looked at a million of those fuse panels, of course you're gonna recognize that something isn't right. And that's correct, that, that you're 100% accurate on that. But let's take any other car. If you're looking at a fuse panel and you see, you know, 10, 10 amp fuses that are all a certain color red, and one that's different, and the different one is on the circuit that you had a problem with, don't we think that that's worth a little bit extra of time? The amount of times I have seen technicians get burned by fuse issues or really, really dumb issues like that is insane. A blown fuse, just because it's not on the circuit that you're directly having a problem with, doesn't mean that there's no influence on what you're working on. Missing fuses is probably the number one thing that I have seen fuse-wise of people getting burned on. And it usually goes something like this. Say the 12 volt outlet doesn't work and you know, dad goes out and checks all the fuses and you know, looks at them and puts them back in. Well, when dad does that, he doesn't see that it's just a little tiny, tiny, tiny crack that you can't even see through the plastic and goes to put it back in. Now that fuse is in the wrong location and it tests good because there's never any power on it. I had a technician spend three days on a problem one time all because a fuse was missing. And this is not just fuse issues, this is connector issues. Maybe that connector is just not click plugged in all the way. Maybe the battery ground cable is loose and jiggling around causing a parasitic current draw. All these really, really simple things not only burn professional technicians, but DIYers as well. We get so caught up in pre-diagnosing what's wrong with the car, or we have all this amazing test equipment, our Pico scope and our high dollar multimeter and our $5,000 scan tool and all this stuff that we easily forget, hey, I gotta check the fuses. Hey, I gotta check the ground. Why do you guys think that the joke in IT is when you call for a computer problem, the first thing they ask you is it turned on and is it plugged in? 
because those things do happen. You know, if I were to ever make like five rules for working on your car by a humble mechanic video or book or something like that, never skipping the basics would be one of them. Think about professional athletes, you know, high school quarterback working on footwork. Well, the professionaliest professional quarterbacks probably still work on that same footwork, those same fundamentals, and that applies to working on cars as well. Does the component have power? Does it have ground? Does the switch function? Okay, yes, no, maybe, right? We want to make sure that we really focus on not skipping those basic steps. Guys, I have, I have said that a million and a half times. It's one of those things that I tried really hard when I was training new technicians to instill in them. Don't skip the basics. Check the fuse. Look at the component that you have a problem with. Is it the right part number? You guys remember airflow meters on Mark IVs where there was like 12 different part numbers and some of they all plugged in okay, but they just never really worked unless it was the right one? Things like that, little clues that something has been done to the car, a different color fuse, the bolts aren't correct. You can see the witness marks where someone took a component off. Pay attention to what the car is telling you when you're working on a car. This is part of the keep it simple stupid. This is part of not skipping the basics. There are times where you need that scan tool, or you need that Pico scope, or you need that high dollar breakout box to test the wirings. Absolutely. But I think you'll find that if you start with the basics, you're going to find the problem most of the time very, very quickly, very, very easily, and headache free. I could have went all the way into those seats, taking them out, taking them apart, ohming out wires, checking power and ground at the connectors, at the switches, you know, tear down like crazy. But something told me, Charles, just quick check the fuse and look what happened. Unfortunately for you guys, it sucks because you don't get that really great full throttle diagnostic video, but you get a video that I think is going to be equally, if not more valuable as a reminder to never, ever, ever skip the basics. It's a good way to work yourself in a circle and not fix the car and then have someone walk over and go, hey man, you're missing a fuse. Why don't you drop one in there and check and see what happens, which I've had happen to me before and I have definitely done that to other people as well. I know it's easy to get caught up in the flat rate race and do things quick and hustle, hustle, hustle. And you know, maybe you've seen this problem a hundred thousand other times. So guys, please take one tiny step back and make sure that you're getting those basics every single time. You're going to find out that that three minutes that you spend, you know, checking the basics is probably going to save you more time than it'll ever, ever cost you. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up there with a question of the day. What is one of your most basic checks when you're doing anything on a car? Drop that down in the comments below. If you guys like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Always appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Or hey, if you're listening, thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you next time.